Hello there, how are you? Welcome back to How I Did It. Well, today is going to be all about my different power sources that I have set up out here at the barn. Just know, two is one and one is none. So capitalize off the different resources that you have available now so that you're not regretting it later on. So with that being said, my barn is set up primarily as a 12 volt system. Lights are 12 volts, ceiling fans are 12 volts. Simply went to the big box store, bought the light that I wanted, wired it for 12 volts, put a 12 volt bulb in it, and it works absolutely fantastic. I have 12 volt outlets that charge everything. So the first inverter I had was from Harbor Freight Modified Sine Wave, a 100 watt solar panel, and this MPPT charge controller. They all came down and they serviced a simple 12 volt fuse box from a lead acid battery. That's how simple the first system was. I even tried using those little light strips. They were totally inefficient. So then I upgraded to these LED light bulbs. They were okay, but they didn't really put out much light. Man, technology. These new LED light bulbs that are 12 volt, they work perfectly. Okay, so my first battery was a lead acid deep cycle, deep cell battery. Maintenance, gassing, just totally inefficient. It got the job done though. Then I upgraded to my lithium ion battery, 12 volt, 100 amp hour. Worked like a charm, but it didn't have enough power in it that I wanted. And again, everything had to be 12 volt. Now they were not, that first battery was not a, did not have a battery management system in it, a BMS, and neither did the upgrade here to my 12 volt, 200 amp hour lithium ion battery. My logic behind that was if I had a lightning strike or an EMP or a solar flare, I didn't want that computer chip to be burnt out and then my system to be dead on arrival. So I went from the modified sine wave inverter to this big boy pure sine wave it worked great for maybe a year and a half two years it was loud it was hot and it was inefficient I also added the midnight solar classic I upgraded to from 100 watts to 250 watt solar panels and then on top of that I added wind into the mix of it because typically when it's sunny out, the solar takes care of it. But when the sun's not out in Florida, you have a tendency to have some real nice wind. And both of those systems combined run my freezer, refrigerator, coffee pot, you name it. Then I decided to upgrade and bring power onto the property so I could run the AC in my RV. Once I got that in place, I added this hybrid inverter on the inside of the barn. Then I trenched about a thousand feet worth of underground lines, put in this box right here that will automatically switch over with my modified sine wave inverter during nighttime. It's a, it's a time switch to run. Are you ready for it? air conditioning on the inside of the barn. Oh my goodness, what a game changer. Now before y'all get all upset, the logic in using the grid power at night is so when I wake up in the morning, my batteries are at near full or a full charge. You just don't know what may happen the next day. Maybe for some reason the wind is not blowing and it's a rainy day for two or three or four days in a row. You don't want to totally deplete your battery system to where you wake up and you don't have anything function for you at all.
Also, to kind of update you, I was able to repurpose my 100 watt solar panels. I was also able to repurpose the 100 amp hour lithium batteries. However, the lead acid batteries, because of the maintenance, um, just the inefficiency and whatnot of them, they are sitting here waiting for somebody who needs a trolling motor battery to uh, just swing by and pick them up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Listen, I want you all to have an absolutely wonderful and blessed day. I want to thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you next week for my different heating systems. Take care.